Jaja. Jaja. Flip up. Jaja. Okay. He says that's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun, and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. Something he devised to salvage valuables from the ground. There are usually spots hidden beneath puddles of oily goo where you can use the net. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. The best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. They are Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you've... It's a little feisty and tough critter. A perfect fit for a live ammunition, if you ask him. It's a glory shiny day out here. The grease monkey's mecton is built sturdy, just like himself. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? Got the moves. Might want to hold your breath before you head any further. You're about to witness the breathtaking vistas of what's known as the Dead Zone. In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. That over there is Steepo Depot, the cliffside that Moog hangs on to. Grab on tight. In more. Diablo. This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Says a monster hunter hears many things on the wind. Moog says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Some Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, they'll do it themselves and you know they'll miss. Claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Says it's wild that the world seems to be coming back, but he supposes that means more monsters for him to shoot. Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Says you should give up on working with the stubborn myriad. He keeps trying to put out their lights and they keep putting up new ones. Man. 
says they keep the monsters away. He needs them closer, not farther. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore, and if it's changed, who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output. Right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall and short. Says as big as they are, the world is bigger. To find where they are, you need to see where they've been. Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. Fortunately for you, he can help. He understands you need to start off with something small before you go big. There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Says it's not far at all. Fortunately for you, the squips seem to have acclimatized themselves to the otherwise uninhabitable dead zone. Easy to lose your way if you can't see landmarks. on walking. Wait, it's the Scrip hole up. The place is just filled with critters. This story is as powerful as you'll let it be. You need more scrap to make that work. Maybe you'll have enough resources later.
slice and dice. Close and count. Tapped hard. That's not opening on its own. Once the volatilization from the nuclear waste evaporated, a volatile gas rose through the soil and infested structures, even Toxanol's own buildings. So, in a way, they caused their own death. Some the night brings terror. Oh, idea. Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up and you can get up to that entrance there. You're a mighty hunter. like the switches need to be turned to match so enough just a few moves left make them count good that's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework
smell that burning fuel. Are your lungs aching? This is the way to travel. He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mecton's claw crane cannon with infinite ammunition. Well done. It's not his cleanest invention so far, but it gets the job done. Use it to suck up gooey oil puddles in the Mecton's way so you can pass. Gizmo's made vehicles before to confront the Jumbo Puff himself, but failed. But this time, it's different. The Mecton will be strong enough to do the job. It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. He asks you to not even think about taking on the Jumbo Puff on foot. You'll need the Mecton to do the job, take his word for it. There's time to improve the Mecton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mecton with on your own. It's already quite sturdy, but upgrading it will greatly improve your chances of victory. Gizmo wants to help if he can. You need to help Gizmo defeat the Jumbo Puff before it destroys the West Route. You should go see the Ankati tribe. Their Hightower headquarter is a sight to behold. Says you should take it easy. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Understands completely. <laughs> 